I believe that bravery is an essential element in being creative because if you're exploring ideas that are really truly innovative then that involves a certain amount of risk and I've never been afraid to take some of those risks and do things that might be experimental and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but it's part of the journey and I'm always wanting to push the envelope. I'm creative because I have to be, because I can't control it. I'm creative when I'm in the car, when I'm on the treadmill. I'm creative when I'm sleeping, or actually when I'm trying to sleep, but instead I'm tossing and turning because I can't get the ideas out of my head. I'm creative when I'm practicing scales or long tones, and I'm with my instrument, and I find myself in that sort of zen place where I can access ideas in a very subconscious way. My approach to breathing is a little bit controversial, so you may not agree with me, but I find that it works very, very well. And that Classical music is still not huge on YouTube, but before many other professionals were posting pieces, Nina Perlove decided to try it out. I immediately started getting responses back from people all over the world, and I immediately realized the power of this tool, YouTube, to reach people that normally you would never have that kind of contact with. I have over six million online views. And what that tells me is that there are people out there who love classical music. The conductor, Benjamin Zander, in a lecture I heard him give, once posed a very interesting question. He said, how would you hold yourself? How would you live? How would you feel if you knew that the whole world loved classical music? They just didn't know it yet. And when I heard him say that, I had to laugh because it perfectly summed up everything that I already believed about my real flute project. I really believe that the whole world loves the flute. They just don't know it yet. And I want to be that person who brings them to that self-discovery that they really do love the flute and love classical music. Now you probably think that I'm delusional for thinking that, but it's the reality that I choose to believe, and it's my reality. And it's actually becoming something of a self-fulfilling prophecy. To me, creativity is also about being able to execute on the ideas and turn them into a reality, because if the ideas just stay locked in my head forever and I never am able to share them with the world, then they never take on that voice and they never are able to be spun out and to see where they can go and what impact they can have. I like to combine elements and genres to blur the lines between entertainment and learning, between pop culture and high art. I also do something which is really radical. I combine classical music with humor. Everybody's talking about the beatboxing flutist Greg Patillo because he has 20 million views on YouTube and he's been on iCarly. But the truth is, I'm a classically trained flutist and I can beatbox. It's not that hard. So today, I thought I would beatbox for you. <laughs> Vampina flute, and today I'm going to teach you to play very good the flute. As you can see, I am a vampire. But the problem is that uh, everybody likes to have a vampire with a very exotic accent, but I I'm really from Michigan, and I don't really know how to do accents very well, but if I just speak in my regular voice, nobody believes that I'm a real vampire. First thing to play the flute when you're vampire if you've been buried in the ground for a very long time, like 5,000 years, I really suggest you get a very good cleaning on your flute because you might find some things inside uh, 
the worms inside the flute it do not sound good, but they do taste good. Oh. And what I like to do to practice the vibrato is to play your vibrato from the throat. You see, it's a nice artery there, yeah, yeah, to pulse, pulse the blood through. And then I say a very good, strong ha 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 to make a pretty vibrato. Just like this, I say ha 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 It's very cool that my online work has been featured in major media outlets such as the Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post and a brief appearance on the Oprah Winfrey Show and an Inside Arts magazine. But what I'm really, really proud of and what keeps me doing this day after day is the response that I get from people who tell me that it has actually made some difference in their lives. To me, if my creativity inspires someone else's creativity, then that is where it becomes really exciting. I don't actually believe that there can be one winner in a competition like this. And I'm not trying to prove to the world that I'm more creative than anyone else. So why am I participating? I would love to share what I've learned and what I've discovered and what I hope to continue to discover on my own creative journey with members of the advertising industry and to enter into discussions and brainstorming and to start new connections for our own creative projects together. The more that I do, the more that I want to do. It's like a snowball effect and I never seem to catch up on my to-do list which just gets longer and longer. I have so many projects. For me, the hard part is deciding which to execute first. I would love to start an online website forum to show backstage glimpses of artists preparing for concerts. I would love to bring all my talents to members of other arts organizations and professionals. I would love to work with members of the non-arts world. I would love to start virtual music schools in third world countries. I want to start a television show featuring the arts around the world and in our own local communities.